morning students today i am here with a new topic for you the name of our topic is the model millennials it is written by oscar wilde let us start with an warm up sessions so you all are aware of the famous painter leonardo da vinci he took 7 years to paint the last super the what is the last super you can see here the picture student the jesus christ is sitting with his disciples okay which include the figure of christ and his disciples after many interview he chose one man whose face showed innocence and beauty too model for christ after 6 year he again interviewed many men to model of judas and finally selected an unpleasant and cruel looking prisoner after the painting was over the prisoner revealed that he was the same person who had posed for rinola as a model for christ 6 year ago so student what you learn from this story we learn that the human appearance is defective one may have a complete different personality from his or her look okay students now i will start with my lesson unless one is wealthy there is no use in being a charming fellow it is better to have a permanent income than to be fascinating these are the great truth of modern life which huggy skin never realize poor huggin when his father died he had left him no money at all huggy lived on a 200 pounds a year that an old aunt gave him he had tried he had tried his hand at various jobs but did not like any of them ultimately he became nothing a delightful unsuccessful young man with a perfect profile and no profession so here student it is a story about a man and what is the name of a man huggy s crane okay unless a person is having a wealth that means money there is no use of being a charming fellow that means what a charm and delight food is no use as a human being is unsuccessful okay so the huggins has never realized that because he was very charming he was having a very charming personality with a good look but he was having no money he was very poor his father has left no money for him he lived on 200 pounds a year in a year he was having only 200 pounds ultimately he had gone to search for a so many of a jobs but he was unsuccessful what was his profile his profile was a young man prefer a charming with a good personality but by profession he was unsuccessful to make matter worse he was in love the girl he loved was lord merton the daughter of retired colonel they were the handmost couples in london and had not a penny piece between them now the most worst condition was the huggy was in love with a girl and what was the name of her girl name lorna merton and he was a she was a daughter of a retired colonel now do makes a very beautiful couple but what happened then huggy was not having a money 
The Colonel was very fond of Huggy, but would not hear of any engagement. Come to me, my boy. When you have got ten thousand pound of your own, and we will see about it. He used to say. So every time when Huggy used to praise, or we can say when he, whenever he used to meet the. Colonel used to have a wish that he wants to marry his daughter. But what the Colonel used to reply? The Colonel used to reply that whenever he has, he may get ten thousand pounds, then only he will think to get her daughter marry with Huggy. One morning, Huggy dropped into a sea a great friend of his, Alan Trevor. Trevor was an artist. He was a strange, rough fellow with an freckled face. What is the meaning of a freckled face, student? A face with many, you can say, a small dots, okay, or spots, and a red ragged beard. However, when he took up the brush, he was a real master, and his pictures were eagerly sought afraid, sought after. That means it was in demand. So one morning, what happened? Suddenly, Huggy met a one of his friend, and what was his name? Alan Trevora. By profession, was a, what was the Trevora? By profession, Trevora was an artist okay but his look was quite strange suddenly if anyone see him may get afraid but when he used to paint it was a big it was in a, in a great demand everyone likes his painting when huggy came in he found Trevora putting the finishing touch to a wonderful life size picture. When Huggy came in, he found Trevora putting the finishing touch to a wonderful life size picture of a beggar man. The beggar himself was standing on a raised platform in a corner of the studio. He was a bent old man with a wrinkled face and the sadness expression. Over his shoulder was flung a coarse black cloak, all tears and tatters. His thick boots were patched and with one hand he leaned on a rough stick, while with the other he held out his batter had for alarms. Now, when Huggy came in, what he saw? The traveler was finishing her touch to a wonderful life-size picture. Here you can see here the student in a picture that he is completing his picture. And who is standing in front of him as a model? A beggar. And what? The beggar was himself standing in front of him and how the beggar looked the beggar looked like uh, his face was wrinkled okay and he have, his complete face was having a sad expression you can see here the children's are clothes are completely being tear off right and he is standing with the help of a rough stick on one hand he has a better hat better hat means his head has been torn up for alums, for alums means to beg the money that you will get from the other. What an amazing model, whisper Huggy as he shook hand with his friend. How miserable he looks. How much does a model get for sitting, asks Huggy. Now, what the Huggy said, it is an amazing model. The person has dressed up like a beggar is a perfect. So, how much one get to be a model for your painting? A ceiling an hour. And how much do you get for your picture, Ellen? Oh, 
for this I get 2000 jeans. Now Allen and Jennings that are all the dollars or we can say the money of the Americans. Well, I think the model should have a percentage. Cried Huggy laughing. They work quite as hard. You do. Nonsense. Why look at the trouble of laying on the paint alone and standing all day long at once is. It is all very well. Huggy for you to talk but I assure you that there are moments when art almost become manual labor but you must not chatter I am very busy so keep quiet so what the Huggy said in a laughing way by making a joke that the one should get a percentage from your painting because your painting gets more money than you pay to the model. So now the traveler has got angry. What he said? What do you think? It is a very easy that person is standing in front of me whole the time and I have to paint it out. It is not so easy. If you will think it is almost a manual labor work. So I am right now I am quite busy and you be quiet. After some time a helper came in and told Traveller that the frame maker wanted to speak to him. Don't run away Huggy, he said as he went out I will be back in a moment. The old beggar took the advantage of Traveller's absence to rest for a moment on a wooden bench that was behind him. So as Severa went out from the room, what the beggar did? He took the advantage of it. What advantage? He just sat down for a moment on a wooden bench that was behind him. He looked so fornal. Fornal means what? Very sad and lonely and rich which means very unhappy. That Huggy could not help pitting him and felt in his pocket. So see what money he had. All he could find was a gold coin, a sovereign, poor old fellow. He thought to himself, he wants it more than I do, but it meant no taxi for the next two weeks. And he walked across the studio and slipped the sovereign into the beggar's hand. That is a British gold coin. Now, the old man looked surprised and smiled faintly. Thank you, sir, he said. Thank you. Now, Huggy itself was not having a money, but still. He was feeling that the beggar should need more money because for the whole day he was standing in front of the traveler as a model. And at last when the Huggies tried to find out how much of money has been left in his pocket, what he found out? He found out a gold coin of sovereigns. Okay, gold coin of sovereign that was used by him that he was going to use it for to pay for a taxi but what he did instead of going in a taxi he gave it to the old beggar. Then Trevorrow arrived and Huggy took his leave blushing a little at what he had done. He spent the day with Laura, got a charming scolding for extravagance and had to walk home. So after meeting with Travera, where the Huggy, what the Huggies did? He just went to spend a day with his girlfriend that is a Laura and from there he got a nice scolding for what? To give, for giving a gold coin to the beggar. Why? Because now he has to walk toward his home. The night he made Travera at the place Palette Club. Well, Ellen, did you get the picture finished all right? 
he said finished and frame my boy answer travera and by the way you have made a conquest that old model you saw is quite devoted to you i had to tell him all about you who you are where you live what your income is what plan you have my dear ellen cried huggy i shall probably find him waiting for me when i go home poor old bridge i wish i could do something for him i think it is dreadful that anyone should be so miserable i have got heap of old clothes at home do you think he would care for any of them why his rags were falling to bed so at the night the huggies had made a call to the traveler to his friend allen for what for asking whether he has completed this picture whether the picture has been framed out so what the answer was been given by travera that the picture has been finished and it is framed out and that's the old model you saw is quite devoted to he him the old model that is a this old model was quite devoted to a giveaway because he had given him a gold coin and the old man was making an inquiry who was he where does he live what was his name everything so what the hugis replied he replied that he might be waiting for him because when he go home the poor old bridge i he wish he could do something for him right but he looks splendid in them said traveler i would paint him in a formal suit for anything however i will tell him of your offer so what was an offer the huggy had decided to give him some clothes that old clothes which were in a heap at his home why he had decided like that because he found that the old man clothes were all torn up right so what the traveler replied that i will send your message to him an artist her heart is the head reply traveler beside your business is to show the world as we see it not to reform it as we know it and now tell me how laura is the old model was quite interested in her you don't mean to say you talk to him about her said huggy now what then what of what is allen asks to the huggy that beside your business or show a world what is going on in your life now tell me how is a laura because the old model was quite interested on her so what the huggies asks don't tell me that you have told my entire story to the old man certainly i did he know all about the rentlessness rentlessness means sick and sabons kanal the lo- lovely laura and the 10000 pounds so what the traveler said yes i have told him everything about your love about the colonel about his fear and about your laura and how you have to get 10000 pound to get married to your girlfriend you told that old beggar all my private affairs cried huggies angrily my dear boy said traveler smiling the old beggar as you call him is one of the richest man in europe so now the reality is been disclosed by the traveler what is that the old beggar that was standing in front of him as a model in reality he was the richest man in europe he has a house in every capital dines of gold plates and can prevent russia going to war when he choose 
What on earth do you mean? exclaimed Huggy. What I say, said Travera. The old man you saw today was Baron Hersberg. He is a great friend of mine, buys all my picture and that sort of thing. He asked me a month ago to paint him as a beggar. What can I say about the wish of the millennials? So what he said now the Huggy was really upset because when the reality why he was upset because the reality came in front of him. Now he was also ang very anger. So he was a great what the traveler said that he was a very great friend of a tra traveler and he what was his wish? His wish was that he wants to make a picture of himself. How? As a beggar. And I must say, he looked magnificent in his rag or perhaps. I should say in my rags. I got that old suit in Spain. Baron Hasburg cried Huggy. Good heavens! I gave him a sovereign and he sank into an armchair in dismay. Gave him a sovereign, shouted Travera and burst into a roar of laughter. So what the Nagi said, what a good heaven, what you are telling that he is a millionaire. I have given my sovereign the money which was very needful to me. Now that made Traveller a laugh. Why? He bursted, he started laughing, he started bursting into a roar of laughter that the Huggies has given him a sovereign and the person was almost a millennial. <coughs> I think you might have told me, Alan, said Huggy, simply and not have let me make such a fool of myself. Well, to begin with Huggy, said Traveller, it never entered my mind that you went about disturbing money in the reckless way. Besides, I did not know whether Husband would like his name mentioned. You know, he wasn't in full dress. What a duffer! He must think me, said Huggies. So what the Huggies said? I don't know that how he has dressed up and even he has set up his mind like a beggar. So I was so reckless to give him a money. Now what he might be think of me is the what a duffer I am. Not at all. He was in the highest spirit after you left. Kept chuckling to himself and rubbing his wrinkled hand together. I couldn't make out why he was so interested to know all about you. But I see it all now. I am unlucky devil, growled Huggy. The best thing I can do is to go to bed. My dear Alan, you must tell you must you must not tell anyone. I shouldn't dare show my face in public. Nonsense is so your generous spirit. Huggy, and don't run away. Stay and talk about Laura as much as you like. However, Huggy would not stop but walked home, feeling very unhappy and leaving Alan Travera in fits of laughter. The next morning, as he was a breakfast, his helper brought a card on which was written, Mr. Gustav Nordin on behalf of Baron Hasburg. So you can see here the card, a wedding present to Huggy Essens and Laura Merton from an old beggar. Now see what was there inside. I suppose he has come for an ap apology, said Huggy to himself and he told the helper to show the visitor up. An old man with gold spectacles and grey hair came into the room. Have I the honour of addressing Mr. Eskin, he said. Huggy's board. 
I have come from Baron Hasburg. He continued, The Baron, I beg, sir, that you will offer him my sincerity apologies. Stammer Huggy. The Baron said, The old gentleman with a smile has asked me to bring you this letter, and he extended a seal envelope. On the outside was written, a wedding present to Huggy Eskrin and Laura Manton from an old beggar and inside was a cheque of £10,000. When they were married, Alan Traveller was the best man and Baron made a speech at the wedding breakfast. Millionaire's models, remarked Alan, are rare enough, but model millionaires are rare still. So that, why you think student, why the Baron Hexburg has provided or given him a gift of 10,000 pounds without knowing the Huggies. The only one reason was that the person, as a person, he was very kind, he was very honest and that made a Baron a very surprise or we can say it has touched to his heart. Therefore, he has presented a 10,000 pound to the Huggies so that he can get married and in that marriage, the Alan Traveller was a best man and Baron itself has given the wedding breakfast. So, this was the lesson here students. You might have understood the lesson very well. Now I will move towards the grammar. <clears throat> Today we are going to see a determiners. A determiners is used to modify a noun. Determiner include articles, demonstrative, possessive determiners and quantifiers. Read this sentence from the text. Huggy live on 200 pounds a year that an old aunt gave him. These are the great truths of modern life which Huggy Eskrins never realized. Now you can see the letter on a bold, bold word A and N the. The highlighted words are articles, right? You have already learned about them. Now read this sentence from the text. The Baron said the old man with a smile. He asked me to bring you this letter and extended a shell envelope. That night he met Traveller at the Palette Club. The highlighted words are called demonstrative. The word these, that, these and those are the demonstrative. Read this sentence from the text. You told that old beggar all my private affair, cried Huggy angrily. When his father died, he had left him no money at all. The highlighted words are called possessive determiner. The word my, our, his, her, your, its and their are possessive determiner. Read this sentence from the text. He has a house in every capital, dines of gold place and can prevent Russia going to war when he choose. The highlighted word is a quantifier. Other words like few, some and money are example of quantifier. Let us solve the blanks. They had free time because there was little to do. Only a few songs in this film are melodious. Sadna took photographs of each place she visited. All students must fill in this form. Please make sure that the news reach every student. His name is Rohit. This is his sister, Sheena. She is 12. Her friend is Shamina, who lives near her house. We all go to the same school. I have a pet. 
Its name is Ferrero. My class teacher is Mr. Mathur. His classes are fun. Sometimes we go picnic with him. His sense of humor and easygoing nature make us love him very much. Now students, we are going to do the phrasal verb. Some phrases have two parts, a verb and a particular, usually a preposition or an adverb. The, part, the particles can change the meaning of the phrase completely. These are called phrasal verb. Huggy lived on 200 pounds a year that an old aunt gave him. God heavens, I gave him a sovereign and he sank into an armchair in dismay. The highlighted words are phrasal verb. Here lived on means depending on an amount of money that one used to buy the thing that no one needs. The word sank into means slowly moved his body into a sitting or lying position in a relaxed or tired way. Now here students we have to match the meaning. Look up to. So look up to is admire. Own up. Own up is confess. Move in. Move in means enter a new home. Pass away. Pass away means die. Pass out. That is faint. Give up. Give up means stop doing something. Hold on. Hold on means grip tightly. Drop in. Drop in means visit. Fill in the blank using a phrasal verb according to the meaning given in the bracket. Take here in the bracket you can see the word remove. The same meaning is take off your jacket. Here it is consult. Please look up the reference in the encyclopedia. I will look after that means here a bracket is given take care of your plants while you are away. Here it is be quick, hurry up or you will miss the bus. Here it is complete. Please fill the form in detail. So student you might have understood the lesson as well as the grammar. So have a good day, stay well, we will meet on the next session.